Praise the Lord, Hope Center. Can we all stand to our feet? Come on, God has been good this week, has he not? Can we just lift our hands and give thanks as we enter into his presence? God, you've been so wonderful, so excellent, and so marvelous, God. This week, Lord, you have kept me. You have watched over me. Lord, you have breathed the breath of life into me. I'm only here because of your grace, your mercy, and your kindness. Come on, somebody. Can we enter into these gates with thanksgiving? Let's just give him a praise as we start this Wednesday night off. Let's do it right and welcome it into this place. Put your hands together and lift your voice. God, you've been so good. You've been so excellent. We ask, God, that you would meet us in this place. Lord, your word says where two or three are gathered, that you are in the midst of them, Jesus. We're here to lift up your name and to call on you, Jesus. We have faith that you are true to your word. You have never failed me yet. And I give thanks for your goodness, your mercy, and your love. Come on, can we put our hands together? You are welcome to worship with us in this place. your praise from my hearts to your ears all the glory is yours now forevermore here our worship all we can give is for you
Did y'all feel that? That was some good stuff right there. How many knows the Waymaker? Yeah. Amen. He'll help you. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. Amen. If you've ever been lost, you know you need a Waymaker. Of course, men don't get lost. We just get kind of turned around, but help us, Lord. Amen. God is good, isn't he? And uh, it's already been said, it's a great week. We are blessed here at Hope Center Church. Every day brings something exciting and new. And we're so happy about that. Praise God. We're so excited to have first-time guests here tonight. Amen. And some second time, third time. And some that just said, well, I like it enough there. I'll just keep coming. We like you too. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. If you are a first-time guest, we have a gift for you. It's up by the front door at the guest center. We'd love for you to stop by, pick that up before you leave tonight. I've got a few announcements and then... Uh, pastor will come and we'll keep on rolling. First of all, Lost and Found. Directly after the service, you can visit the prayer room. And there, if you have lost anything here at HCC, all items will be displayed to pick up. Now, it's not lost, and I think that may be mine, but it's lost and you lost it, hallelujah. Lost and found, so it's always fun to go back there and shop. I mean, look around, hallelujah. March the 25th, Easter preparation work day. Right here at Hope Center Church, we're looking for men and women who are willing to volunteer just a few hours of their time to help clean the sanctuary, to prep outdoors for springtime, and we're getting ready for a great Easter. I'm telling you, we're excited. They're practicing every day and every night, and it's going to be fantastic. We're looking forward to that. This weekend is a children's revival weekend. Amen. And that wasn't even noise. Our kids are upstairs. Children's revival weekend, 7 p.m., on Friday night, it's going to be a sectional children's rally. And then on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. will be a teacher training. And then Sunday, both services are going to be oriented toward our youth and our children. And we're excited about what God is going to do. We've already got one child ready to be baptized in Jesus' name. Others want the Holy Ghost. And we're looking forward to seeing God pour it out. March 30th and 31st, important days in the lives of our ladies. That's Destiny Ladies Conference. Yeah. It's going to be a big deal. And it's here in San Antonio. Not just in San Antonio. It's just a stone's throw down I-10. And you'll be there. It's at the Western North. And Saturday is the last day to pre-register. After that, if you don't pre-register, then it goes up just a little bit. But don't worry if you forget it, you can still register. But Saturday pre-registration uh, is going to be increased and we look forward to having a great ladies conference. April the 15th, singles game night. Hallelujah, all of you that have paid your taxes, Come singles game night. That works out pretty good. Amen. Sister Lux and others are in charge of this. There's a sign-up sheet in the back of the sanctuary. And join us, adult singles, for a fun night of fellowship and always some food. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't God good? Now, ladies, mark your calendars. April the 21st, new date coming up, Women of Hope Paint Party. 
paint party. Now, that's a little mystery right now, but wait, details are coming. And also, May the 6th is going to be the Women of Hope Luncheon from 12 to 2, May the 6th. And that's going to be a great Mother's Day celebration. And there's going to be the, the uh, charities. Uh, charity what? <laughs> Campaign for Charities. I've said it so many times I forgot it. And that's uh, the drawing is going to take place that day. If you can't be here, it will be live streamed. And uh, we're going to have uh, a great time. And people are excited about what's going on. I don't see anybody back there, but there are tickets still for sale. Still for sale. In fact, Sister Scoggins said today that she just got a hundred more, and uh, she's getting a hold of her family, and they're uh, sending her money by Cash App, and she's sending them a picture of their ticket. Come on now, some of you's got family up in East Texas, in Louisiana, in New York City. Hey Amen. We'll even get it down to South America. I know we got some South Americans represented here. Praise God. Well, let's stand together. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many is glad that the Lord has forgiven you? Where would we be without the forgiveness of the Lord? Now turn to somebody near you and you tell them, I forgive you. Pastor Scoggins. Praise the Lord, everybody. Why don't we do that? Why don't we give praise to him and worship to him, honor to him and glory to him? nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost tonight. Is there anybody thankful you've got the Holy Ghost tonight? In the midst of trouble, trial, and tribulation, God is still on the throne. So thankful for his goodness, his greatness, his power, his authority, and most of all, his mercy and his love. God is merciful, full of love and compassion, and we love and adore him tonight. God bless you. It's such an honor to have each and every one of you, and you may be seated tonight. We are so very honored and delighted to have with us Jesse and Christy Thomas, missionaries, the real heroes of all of us, the heroes of the United Pentecostal Church. We give honor to them tonight. and are so elated that they are with us and they're going to be talking to us about uh, Saipan in Micronesia and we are so excited that they are with us tonight. The Lord has been faithful. He's been good. He's been holy. He's been righteous. He's been altogether lovely. And I'm so thankful for his many blessings. We had a tag-in board meeting today and and there is movement, there is motion, and we are excited about uh, getting this building project uh, going and in order. We'll have another board meeting next Monday, and we'll be interviewing an architect, and we are just excited about the goodness of the Lord. We'll be reporting back to you next steps and uh, how you're going to be able to get involved uh, with us, and we're just thankful for the blessings of the Lord. God is so faithful, so holy, and so good, and we celebrate his righteousness tonight. Lord, we're so thankful today for your mercy and grace and, and an opportunity to be in your house yet again. I pray that a supernatural anointing would rest upon this service. I pray that a peace that passes all understanding and a powerful Holy Ghost anointing would be upon Brother Thomas tonight if, as he delivers his burden, his passion for their country. I pray that you would bless he and his wife with a special blessing. I thank you for their willingness to sacrifice and all of the sacrifice that it takes to even prepare to go to a foreign land to take the gospel. I pray that you would bless them, honor them, and help us to receive and become a blessing for them and to them 
And we ask humbly tonight in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen to that. And Lord, we thank you for blessing and receiving our offering. And we return to say, first of all, thank you for your faithfulness to us as a people and individuals. And thank you for the faithfulness of your people to bring their tithe and their offering weekly into the storehouse. We thank you and we pray a special blessing upon all of them. We are thankful for the fruitful, bountiful blessings that you have bestowed and you continue to bestow on each of us. We love you. We adore you. We thank you for it. And let the church say amen tonight. God bless you. There is an electronic giving capability in the back uh, for your convenience. Uh, we are so glad to have each and every one of you in the house of the Lord today. And I'm excited about we're gonna, what we're going to hear about Saipan and what's going on in Micronesia. I'm glad that we are a part not only of North American revival, but we're a part of a global revival that is happening around the world. You participate with your prayer and with your finance, and we thank God for every one of you tonight. Let's worship the Lord with these amazing frontline singers as they come to, to escort us into the worship of our, our great and mighty God. It's not entertainment, folks. It's leading us to a place of worship. Are you ready to worship with them tonight? If he's made a way, can you just lift up your hands? Can you just open up your mouth and say, God, thanks for making a way. When I didn't know how or what it was going to happen, you made a way. Thank you, Jesus. You make ways out of no ways. Standing here, not knowing how we'll get through this test, but holding on to faith you know best, that nothing can get you by surprise. You got this figured out, you're watching us. Pick us up and you 
and give the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings a standing ovation. Would you give him praise? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. One of the greatest gifts ever given to this church was Reverend Robert Baer. And we are so glad to have Candace with us tonight. Candace, so glad that you are here. And uh, our speaker tonight, ministry at least, uh, started and was established in Indiana. And I believe uh, your old stomping grounds, Brother Bear, was Muncie. Indiana's where it all started. So Indiana is represented here tonight. So thankful for the goodness of the Lord. And while you remain standing, it is indeed an honor and a privilege to have what I have classified many, many times as the real heroes of the United Pentecostal Church. Men and women who are willing to leave houses, careers, and lands to go to a foreign country, open up their heart, and take the word of God to nations who have never heard this glorious gospel. And we are very humbled and honored to have with us one of those hero couples here tonight. Would you put your hands together for Reverend Jesse Thomas as he comes? I believe in the, the Word of God. It simply says, God is great and greatly to be praised. Why don't we give him some of that greatly praise? Why don't we praise him like it, like you just got filled with the Holy Ghost for the first time? Like you just healed your body for the first time. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. What an honor it is to be in this beautiful church with you beautiful people. I want to give honor to Pastor Scoggins. My goodness. That's all right. We got to love our man of God. He's busy with the, the district, busy with revival right here. Building, getting ready to, I pulled in and getting ready to build a new sanctuary. It said, I'm talking, that's revival. Pastor, I didn't ask, how many years were you, are you here? 14 years, but how many years in ministry? 30 plus years. Ladies and gentlemen, that speaks to faithfulness. That speaks to the love of people and the love of this gospel. Praise the Lord. And in her absence, we give honor to Sister Scoggins. And, and Brother Bear, I have not got to the, the pleasure of meeting you, but please, I want to meet you before I go. They tell me the walking Bible. Praise the Lord. Folks, these are the elders that we want to rub shoulders with. Amen. These are the men of God that we want to, we want to be around. Praise God. If you've got your Bibles, turn with me to Acts chapter 13. 
Acts 13. We're going to just read uh, three verses of Scripture. Acts 13, 1 through 3. If you got it, say amen. If you don't got it, say wait on me, preacher. Uh Uh-oh. I believe they got it on the boards. I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. It says, Now in the church that was in Antioch, there was certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Today I want to talk about, I'm I'm going to share some testimonies from the mission field. I want to stir some faith in the house and in our hearts today. And I want to talk on a, a simple subject, results of being sent. Results of being sent. If you'll set your Bibles down, help me pray for just a moment. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God, for your love, for your mercy, Lord, for the blood that was shed. God, I'm asking you to cover us under that blood tonight, Lord. Let there be no hindrance between us and you. But, Lord, we come here to call upon the name of Jesus. Lord, I don't want to leave this place the way that I come. But, Lord, I'm seeking revival. I want to be renewed, remade, recreated. God, I want to be reborn in you today. If that's your prayer, why don't you clap your hands and say, Jesus' name. Give your neighbor a high five, and you may be seated. So Bible scholars, Bible teachers, they tell us that this is the first time that the church sent out missionaries. And some people say, well, what about Jesus sending out the 72 or the 12? I would agree, but this was the first time the church sent out missionaries. Missionaries. It was in a prayer meeting when they were praying and fasting and the gifts of the Spirit came and, and said, separate to me these men for a work in which I have called them. And it wasn't always just uh, uh, fun and games, the calling was it, but in the apostles' own writings, he, he talked about some hard times. He talked about being in perils of, of uh, as, uh, strangers and perils of his own countrymen. He said he'd been shipwrecked a night and the day in the deep. He, he said he'd been stoned and oftentimes he, he'd received stripes and often cold and hungry. And this is what the Lord called him to. Somebody say sacrifice. But it wasn't all sacrifice because we read in the scripture, in the epistles, in the book of Acts, the the things that occurred in these men's ministry. They was people who were possessed by uh, evil spirits that found their deliverance. They was people that were healed of, of various diseases. The dead were even raised to life. But even more than that, the gospel went forth. People got a chance to repent of their sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost was poured out. Churches were established. And ladies and gentlemen, we're here today because of these men. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And and it was just like this in a prayer meeting. My my wife and I, uh, you're going to laugh at this, but we're first generation apostolic like the apostle Paul and Barnabas. It was in a prayer meeting that the Lord called us and said we would walk in foreign nations and and foreign lands, and he, you've been to missionary services, they say, I was called to this country at this, I didn't get that, I got foreign lands. And I tried to figure it out, and for two years I was miserable. My wife said, I made everybody around me miserable. And, I, and I'm just going to tell you, if, if the Lord's calling you to something, just go ahead and step into it. Life is better when you find yourself in the will of the Lord, and it's easier, Amen. And I'm just being transparent, and I'm at my dining room table, and I'm, I'm out of frustration. I said, fill out the application. Fill it out for England, and fill it out for three months. And you say, why England? They speak English. Why three months? Because I could go there, scratch the itch for missions, and I could get back to my life. And we sent the application off after our pastor signed off on it, and and uh, six, about six weeks later, headquarters calls us, uh, Global Missions. They said, Brother Thomas, 
We've got churches with no pastors. We've got islands with no churches. And we've got missionaries that are soon to retire. And we need help in the Pacific. But you'll have to go for a year. I said a year. That means sell the business, sell the house, walk away from kids and grandbabies. And, and I looked at my beautiful wife and I said, are we called to this or not? And she's smiling and said, yes. And I said, that's what we will do. And that's what we did. We went off to a place called Micronesia. Anybody ever heard of Micronesia? Micro, small, Nesia means islands, small islands. And they got a map of Micronesia. There we go. Micronesia is unique. Remember the call that God said? Foreign lands. There's six nations in Micronesia. Palau is in the bottom corner. Federated States of Micronesia. Marshall Islands. Kiribati. Guam represents the U.S. and the, Mar or the Mariana Islands. And we were asked to go to work and a little country of Palau. Palau is a tiny little place in the bottom left-hand corner of your map. And, and there's two congregations there. There's a Filipino congregation and there's a Palauan congregation. We were assigned to work with the Palauans. And I'm getting ready to show you a video of, of what happened and some testimony. But before they start the video, I want you to know when you see this, this is predominantly what all Micronesia is going to look like. When we arrived there, the pastor handed it to us and said, we need help. We haven't had anyone get the Holy Ghost in a while. Our numbers are down. I, I looked at the attendance book, six on some Sundays. A good Sunday would have been 12 people. And so we got to work uh, preaching and teaching and doing outreach. We started a radio ministry. We uh, had a prison ministry. We done some village crusades. And let's see the video. This is, uh, I'll talk through it so we know what we're looking. Not the next, the, the one before that. There we go. That young lady you see there, that is my daughter. She's at Indiana Bible College right now. That's Hawaii. I've never been to Hawaii. I thought I'd better take a picture from the plane. But this is some of the church that welcomed us there. Uh, 26 hours of travel to get there. And that fruit basket was very welcome sight when we arrived. This is our little home uh, in Palau. It's just a two-room house surrounded by coconuts and mangoes and bananas and lemons. You notice there's no air conditioner. There is an air conditioner now thanks to the church that is in Guam because Micronesia, as hot as it is in South Texas, I promise you it's hotter and you don't get a break from it. It's 365 days a year. It's close to the equator. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. You don't have to look very far at all in Micronesia to find a beautiful sunset. This is the church that we ministered in. Remember, we started with about six. This is some of the, the youth. You see my daughter and my wife praying there. My wife's brother passed away while we were there. We couldn't make it home, and that's the church comforting my wife. This is the Filipino congregation. They're running about 100 in a hotel. Sister Debbie receiving the Holy Ghost for the first time. This is a Palawan home. Now, they're, they're not like our homes. They're very humble. That green tin on the outside, if you were inside the home, you'd just be looking at the backside of that tin. But the Palawan people and Micronesian people, they're very humble, very content, very satisfied with, with the things that they got. These are all outreach photos. This sister we're praying with here, her name is Marcella. Remember her. We prayed for her. We met her right there. We prayed for her, gave her a 10-minute gospel. These are some outreach photos, outreach workers. This young girl here, her name is Samoe. When we first met her, her feet were open, bloody, sores. She'd been through three rounds of antibiotics. Nothing was healing her. We laid hands on her and prayed, and her feet began to scab over like that. That led to a Bible study with her grandmother, and she was the second person to get the Holy Ghost on the island. These are all home Bible study students, all baptized in Jesus' name. Sister Esther receiving the Holy Ghost at a home Bible study. Sister Cindy receiving the Holy Ghost at a home Bible study. Village crusades, you think crusades, you think of thousands of people, but these villages had 60 and 70 houses in them, and we would go for two days, and we would sing, and we would preach and teach on the goodness of God, the promise of God, the, the gift of the Holy Ghost, and, and God would do great things in these meetings. He would, uh, like this sister here, her name is Cyrie. She was baptized 20 years ago in Jesus' name, but received that Holy Ghost that night. Folks, don't wait 20 years. Get the Holy Ghost tonight. 
We got to have some fun while we were there. If you like World War II, that's a Japanese cannon. This stuff is all over these islands. We got to, one of the Filipina sisters worked at this tourist thing and we got to fly the plane. When my daughter flew the plane, my wife and I spoke in tongues in the back. This is the Filipino congregation. They got their young people out front leading worship. They're a beautiful people. They worship the same God we do. They get the Holy Ghost the same way we do. Remember Marcella, we gave her a 10 minute gospel. She said she wanted to be baptized, came out of the water, speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. Brother Sato, we're gonna talk about him in just a moment. Filled with the Holy Ghost coming out of the water. Sister Cindy, she got the Holy Ghost at a home Bible study. Brother Ernie, we're gonna talk about Brother Ernie. Uh, we were preaching on the promises of a God. He gave us that rainbow. We baptized eight that day, and God filled one with the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Last year, in that tiny island, we baptized 50, and God filled 41 with the Holy Ghost. This young lady here was a teenage mother. My wife spoke on Mother's Day. She got the Holy Ghost on Mother's Day. My daughter done an amazing job with the youth. She had eight kids baptized, eight kids filled with the Holy Ghost. She's at Indiana Bible College now. She's going to, she studied missiology, and we're so proud of her. This young girl with her's Day Day. She lived by the church, and she pretty much lived with us. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we sacrificed. We walked away from things, businesses, and all that stuff, but God blessed us with revival. And ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you that revival always comes behind sacrifice. And I'm looking around, I can look around this beautiful church and I can know that there's been some sacrifice. There's been some bunch of sacrifice. You know, there's people in here, you know what it, what it means to give until it hurts. You've sacrificed so there can be a church for your family, for your kids, for your grandkids. There's, there's people in here, you, you know what it's like to, to pick up your cross and deny yourself and, and follow him. You know what it's like to overcome addictions. I'm talking about sacrifice. You, you know what it's like to have friends walk away because you've chosen to walk with God. You know what it's like to have family members mock you and talk about you because you've decided to walk with the Lord. Praise God. And, and the temptation comes. See, we come to church and we look to the left and we look to the right and, and we see brother so-and-so getting a blessing and, and, and having revival in his life and in his ministry. And, and you wonder, where is my revival? And, and the temptation comes and says, well, just throw in the towel, walk away and quit. God must not be paying attention to your sacrifice. Honey, I want to tell you, the devil is a liar. He's always been a liar. I'm telling you, he's not going to do for one that he won't do for another. Your sacrifice, God has seen. Your sacrifice, he has honored. You've gone. Your revival is coming. It's not time for to walk away or throw in the towel or quit. But now, in these last days, more than ever, it's time to pray more, fast more, reach more, teach more. It's not time for less church, but it's time for more church. Because why? Your revival, your blessing is on its way. Somebody say hallelujah. Let's, uh, let's see. Wait, wait, before we go to the next one. Pastor did it. He set this up perfect. He said, these are the heroes. And I, I've been around long enough to know that we've been called heroes at different conferences and different things. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you, I, I don't feel like a hero. I really don't. Really, I don't feel like there's anything different between you and me. I got the same Holy Ghost that you got. I had to repent of my sin just like you had to repent of your sin. I, I had to make a choice to walk this. The only difference between you and me is God called me to a rock out in the ocean, and he called you right here to Texas. Amen. Praise God. 
And I'm telling you, like people say, well, I don't know if I could do the things that a missionary does. And I don't know if I could have revival. I don't know if I could win a soul. I don't know if I could this, that, or the other. I don't have the money. I don't have the resources. I don't have the team or what have. I want to show a, just a very, one more quick video. In this video, you're going to see what missions is and how simple it is. Let's see this video. They're singing in the Palawan language the praises of God. see the next picture should be one more picture there we go this is the results the Holy Ghost fallen so I like to tell people that God is no respecter of persons if you can gather together a few plastic chairs in your yard or in your living room and you can sing the praises of God and you can lift up His name, I'm telling you, God inhabits the praises of His people. It doesn't take a team. It doesn't take a lot of money. All it takes is someone willing to say, you know what, God, I'm going to worship you. Not only that, is I'm going to tell somebody about it. I'm telling you, church, you can have a revival in your living room at the coffee shop shop at the restaurant in the front seat of your car God's no different he won't do for a missionary what he won't do right here in Texas you say well I don't know what I'd say and I don't know uh, this that and the other I'm telling you we got everything you need God's given you a church he's given you a great pastor and more than that he's he's given you a testimony and this place this city needs to hear your testimony Come over to my house. Let me tell you how God filled me with the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you how God healed me. Let me tell you how God delivered me. Let me tell you how I used to be this, but now this. I used to go here, but God did. I'm telling you, you got a testimony and a reason to lift up your voice and shout and let the world know the goodness of God. Praise the Lord. Let's see the, let's see the next picture. Oh, this is, this is Brother Ernie. And before I tell Ernie's story, i got to tell a couple backstories. so just be patient with me. When I, uh, when I got off the plane in Palau, it was the first time i ever been out of the country. And I'm going through customs, and on, there's a sign about the size of that screen. And it says this, If you get caught smuggling drugs, it's automatically 25 years into prison, no questions asked. I had a... Uh, multivitamins and ibuprofen and I didn't know what they considered a drug and I was real scared <laughs> and I made it through so I in our prison ministry I met this gentleman he said pastor pray for me I said what's going on he said I'm I'm eight years on a 25 year sentence I said what did you do he said, they charged me with smuggling drugs, only I didn't smuggle them. He said, I went down the street and I bought them. He said, but I've been here for eight years on a 25-year sentence. I said, oh, wow, that's rough. He said, but pastor, rougher than that is, he said, I've seen men come into this prison. He said, violent men, pastor. He said, I've never wanted to hurt or had a desire to hurt anybody. But these are men that everybody knows that they murdered. They've abused women and done awful things to kids. He said, they're here for three months at the most six, and then they're gone. I said, well, how does that work? He said, because, Pastor, he said, it's a small island, small place. And he said, they've got somebody running for some political office and their family, and, and the, their family doesn't want that on their name, so the, the senator or whoever he is, he, he makes it disappear like it never happened. And they walk free. He said, I don't have any politicians, Pastor, in my family. Pray for me. He said, okay. Now remember that as I tell you about Ernie. Ernie is the nephew of the, whole, of the president of the whole nation. His mama is the sister of the president. He's prideful. He's arrogant. He's stubborn. I met Ernie because his wife came to church. 
His wife came to church about three weeks before he did. She came, repented of her sins, got baptized, got the Holy Ghost, just like that. It was about three weeks or a month later, Ernie shows up. And I really believe Ernie showed up because he didn't want his wife to have something he didn't have. Because he said in the back section of the church over here like this. He wouldn't move. He wouldn't worship. None of those things. I had a, for Bible study, him and his wife. It was me and my wife, him and his wife on Tuesday night. We had midweek Bible at the church and then we had a Sunday service. I seen him three times a week. And midweek studies, he come in and he, uh, he was always, they were always fighting. We did more marriage counseling than we did anything. And, and one particular Tuesday he comes in, he's mad. And I say, what's going on? And his wife says, Pastor, you need to talk to him. It's all him. This one ain't got nothing to do with me. It's all him. I said, Ernie, what's going on? And Ernie looks at me and he says, Pastor, I'm going to kill this Polish man. I said, Ernie, you trying to get the Holy Ghost. You can't have murder in your heart trying to get the Holy Ghost. He said, but Pastor, this man stole my land. I said, Ernie, he's a foreigner. He can't even own land in the islands. He said, but Pastor, he can lease it. And he was supposed to lease one lot and he took three. And my mother remember who his mother is, said I should kill him because nobody steals from our family. I said, Ernie, you can't be having murder. And he said, Pastor, he can't steal and I'm going to kill him. I said, Ernie, have you talked to the man? Have you? I'm trying to. And he ends up leaving. He comes to church Thursday. And, of course, I run to him. Ernie, what's going on? What happened? I did what you said. What would you do? I went and asked him about it I said what happened he said I showed him the paperwork and I said you you took three and you're only supposed to have one and I said what did he say he said well he said I didn't want three and he said he marked it out initialed it and said I just wanted the one and handed it back to me wasn't that easier than killing the man Ernie <laughs> this is the type of guy he was so New Year's Eve we'll fast forward a little bit we were going to have a watch night service and old-fashioned foot washing we still do foot washing around here. Do we know what it is? Okay. So, so here, here's this prideful man. We got the women on one side and the men on the other, and my feet's in the bucket and Ernie's in front of me. Pastor, why are we doing this? I said, Ernie, Jesus washed his disciples' feet. I said, he told us to do likewise. I said, Ernie, you know the Bible teaches us that God resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. And something clicked that night. My pant leg was already rolled up and he began to splash me from my knee down to my leg and around my ankles and began to get between every toe and it began to tickle. And I said, all right, Ernie, that's good, that's good. And I'll never forget, he went back to his spot. He must have been chewing on this. And it was getting ready to be midnight, and the church wanted to pray in the new year. And I said, just pray, and when you're done praying, don't disturb anybody else. Just dismiss. Just go ahead and leave. And people started filtering out. And I look over, and I see Ernie. And I seen something I'd never seen before out of him. He was praying. But he wasn't just praying. He was praying with tears. He was praying with snot. And he said stuff like this in this type of way. Jesus, oh God, I'm a sinful man. Oh, I've got so much wickedness. Oh, Jesus, forgive me. Oh, Lord, I need your man. He's just going, and he's going, and I'm getting excited, and I run to him. I say, Ernie, don't you stop on me. He ain't even paying attention. He's someplace else. He's just crying out to his God, and, and I, I'm praying with him, and I get tired, and I come back, and I sit down on the altar. The only people left in the church is me, my wife, and a little boy, and, and Ernie. And I sat there, and I watched as God filled that prideful, stubborn, arrogant man with the gift of the Holy Ghost, evidence of speaking in other tongues. And see, I, I can't tell Ernie's story without thinking about the North American church. So many times we, we miss our blessing because we come in with the wrong attitude. We come in with an attitude that, that says, God, I don't cuss, drink, or chew, or hang out with those that do. I, I'm dressed through and through and give my 10% to you. You owe me, God, and I'm here to get what you owe me. Can I tell you? 
most times God doesn't touch that and He doesn't bless that. But if we would just get a checkup from the neck up every now and then when we came into the house of God and said, God, I don't care if you ever bless me. I'm just happy to be in your house. I'm just happy to be under the blood. I'm just happy to have my sins washed away. God, I'm going to bless your name in the valley just as much as I will on the mountain. I'm here today just to give you glory, just to praise your name, just to lift up the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, that's the attitude that God can bless. That's the attitude that God can fill you with the Holy Ghost with. Somebody shout Jesus. Let's see the next picture. That's Ernie that night. Holy Ghost filled. He's almost smiling. <laughs> Praise God. Let's see the next photo, please. Oh, this brother Sato. Pastor, if you had two Sato's, you could turn Texas upside down. We found Sato. He was homeless. He was staying with one of the brothers at the church, and we went and taught him a Bible study, and he wanted to be baptized. And that's us baptizing that island you see behind us. When Sato came out of the water, that island knew he got the Holy Ghost. He was screaming in a different language. Let's see the next picture. That's him right there filled with the Holy Ghost. He was the type of guy, he would, he would say, Pastor, are you going to go teach a Bible study today? I said, yes. He said, can I go? I said, yeah. Pastor, can I mow the grass? Yeah. Pastor, can I do picks and drops? Let's pick people up, drop people off. Yeah. Pastor, can I do something with the youth on Friday? Yeah. Pastor, can I, can I play the keys and sing a song this Sunday? We got some things to talk about, but absolutely. He just wanted to be involved. He was so blessed to be in the kingdom of God. We were already back in the States, and my supervisor and missionary called me and said, uh, we're getting ready to start a Bible school in Micronesia. As a matter of fact, it started last month. And we talked about it. We hung up the phone. Two days later, Sato calls me. He says, Pastor. I said, yeah. He said, they're getting ready to start a Bible school in the islands. And he said, I want you to know that I'm going to be the first person to sign up. I wanted to test him. I said, why do you want to sign up for Bible school? And he began to talk to me like I should already know. Because, Pastor, there's people over here at this island that need the Holy Ghost. I didn't know nothing about the Holy Ghost till the church came and told me about the Holy Ghost. And I, I want them to know about the Holy Ghost because they need the Holy Ghost over there. And I want to go to Bible school so I can be a pastor and I can tell them about the Holy Ghost. Now, look, he don't know. He don't know. He don't understand. When You understand when I tell you his next thing he said. He's, he said, but I don't want to be a boring pastor. I said, what are you talking about? He says, you know, like those pastors that stay at the same spot, teach the same people. He said, I want to travel from this island to this island and this island. He said, I want people to get the Holy Ghost everywhere. And I said, Sato, you don't want to be a pastor. You want to be an evangelist. He said, well, whatever you call it, what I know is they need the Holy Ghost over there. And I'm going to go to Bible school so they can get the Holy Ghost. I don't care what it's called. Some of you in here, you're teaching Sunday school. You're teaching home Bible study. You might even have a pulpit ministry. And sometimes you wonder, is, is it for not? Is, are they even getting it? Are they even retaining it? I want to tell you, keep teaching. Keep preaching. Keep reaching. Keep doing what God called you to do. Because someday you might win the next evangelist, the next pastor, the next missionary. Praise God. Praise God. Let's see the next photo. All right, I got to hurry. I got to hurry. This, uh, this sister here, you see Sato. He's right there by my side. This sister here, her name is uh, Sayoko. Sayoko can't walk. We heard about Sayoko. She wanted to hear a Bible study, and we went to her house. And you've seen how humble their houses are, right, in the video. Well, the inside of their homes is just as humble. There's really no furniture or things. They have some things they've made out of wood themselves. But she can't walk, and she lays her bed as an, an elevated table made of wood. There's no pad. There's no blanket. There's no mat. It's just hard wood that she lays on. And when we met her, she's laying on that, that, that board. She smells like urine. But we gave her a Bible study. 
And we told her about the goodness of God and the mercy of God and how she could repent of her sins and she could be baptized in the name of Jesus and how God would fill her with the Holy Ghost. And, and we didn't stop there. We said, you know, Sayoko, our God is a healing God and God can heal you. And she said, well, I want to be baptized. I said, great. And we didn't know how we were going to do it because she didn't have a wheelchair, nothing like that. And, and so that sister in the blue in the front She's from California. She was visiting that day, that week, and she was a nurse. And she said, we can cradle carry her in a blanket. And so we slid her from her board into that van, drove down to the water. Let's see the next picture. And that's us baptizing her in Jesus' name. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, I'd like to say that, that she came up out of the water speaking in tongues, running around, healed and dancing and giving God glory, but that's not what happened. She got wetter and heavier, and we had to carry her up the hill and lift her up into the van and back to her, her house, and my back felt it for two days or two weeks. I'll never forget where I was at. I was already here. I was in Napa, California in an evangelist quarters. It was December. Santo calls me, and he says, Pastor... I've had the most best day. That's how he talks. I said, really? Tell me about it. He said, my mother called me today and said that I've joined a cult and that I'm going to the lake of fire and that I need to quit this church and go back to her church. And if I don't, none of the family is going to talk to me. I said, Sato, I don't sound like a good day at all. He said, but pastor, you ain't heard the whole story. I said, okay, tell me. He said, do you remember Sayoko? I said, yeah. He says, you know that board she lays on? I said, yeah. He said, the other day, Pastor, she's home by herself, and she's laying there on that board, and her spine begins to get warm. And it begins to get warmer and warmer and warmer till she can't take it anymore, and she rolls off of that board. He said, only she didn't roll off onto the floor. She rolled off onto her feet. And she looked down, raised her hands to give God praise because she's standing on her feet. And God filled her with the Holy Ghost, evidence of speaking in other tongues. I said, Sato, that is a great day. He said, but pastor, that's all right. Come on, let's worship God. Praise you, Jesus. I said, Sato, that is a great day. I begin to get excited. He said, but pastor, you ain't heard it all. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, she's connected to a guy in Kiongo. And that's the most northernmost island in Palau. And he come down to visit her because everybody knows she can't walk. And now she's walking around everywhere. And he stays four days with her trying to figure it out. And he leaves and goes and tells his pastor. Now, his pastor is not an apostolic pastor. And it piqued the curiosity of this pastor. And he come down to... Sayoko's home. And this is what the pastor said to Sayoko. He said, Sayoko, can I tell you a story? She says, yes. He said, the other day, or a couple weeks ago, he said, my wife had to go to Guam for medical attention. Now, that's normal in the islands. Guam's like going to the city. And, but she had never been on a plane before, and she was scared. And as she was on that plane, she began to pray. And as she was praying, she began to speak in a language that she didn't know. And that's never happened to her before. And he says to Sayoko, he said, I hear that that has happened to you. Now, I don't recommend, Pastor, I don't re I, folks, I don't recommend we evangelize or go in our neighborhoods and talk like this. But this is Sayoko's response to the good pastor. You teach it wrong. You lie to people. You say God doesn't do miracles? Look at me. You say God doesn't fill people with the Holy Ghost. But I'm telling you, I spoke in tongues like your wife spoke in tongues. You need to start going and telling the truth. I'm telling you, out of the mouth of babes. The good pastor says, Sayoko, that's why I'm here. I'm trying to understand. And she says, I can't tell you. You need to go see the pastor at the apostolic church. And so that's what he did. He goes and he sees the pastor. And the pastor opened it up and said, we believe 
Open the scripture and say, we believe in repentance of our sin. Baptism by immersion in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of those sins. And we believe God still fills you with the Holy Ghost, with evidence of speaking in other tongues. And when you get that Holy Ghost, it'll change your life. You won't walk the same way or talk the same way. We believe that God still works miracles. And this pastor said, I get it. I see it. It's right there. This is what's happening. I began to get real excited and I said, Sato, this is great. This truly is a great day because he can go back and he can tell his congregation and they can get the Holy Ghost as well. He said, but pastor, you ain't heard it all. I said, what more could there be? He said, well, it turns out he's a pastor of pastors. Now, in this certain denomination, they've got a church building almost in every village on this little island nation. And he's the pastor over all of the pastors. And I began to get real excited, and I said, Sato, do you remember those prayer meetings? Every Saturday night, we would pray, and i say, God, bring us revival. Lord, bring revival to this island. There's people gathering together in your name. They don't have truth. They haven't been baptized in your name. They haven't been born again, but they're hungry, and they need you, Lord. I'm asking you, God, to do them. I said, Sato, this is the revival. This is God answering our prayer. I said, Sato, this is a great day. This can bring revival that we've been praying for he said but pastor you ain't heard it all I said what more could there be he said you remember when I first called you and I said my mother was persecuting me I said yeah he said well it turns out that's her pastor and he says well, we're right the new convert God's doing miracles, filling people with the Holy Ghost, healing people, delivering people, causing revival to happen. All he cared about was he was right. Just in case you're wondering, ladies and gentlemen, repentance of sin is right. Jesus' name, baptism is right. Infilling of the Holy Ghost is right. Holy living, it's right. And just in case you're wondering, you're in the right church at the right time, in the right hour, to have the right revival that your family needs and wants. Praise God. Can I, whoo, glory God. Can I tell you, I could have never re I could have took my old wore out Bible. It's been all over the world. In my little Bible study chart, and I would have never reached that man. Ever. But God can take what most people would say. I'm going I'm to start walking because this is what happens to me. God can take what most people would just throw away. Can I tell you, there's no throwaway people in the kingdom of God, but this gospel is for everybody, every tribe, every tongue, every nation, every skin color, every economic class. It doesn't matter your last name. It doesn't matter your past or your history. God is giving this gospel to everybody. And God can take a woman like Sayoko and says, watch what most people would throw away. Watch what I can do with that. I can glorify my name. Can I tell you, some of you are wondering, wondering, are you doing anything for God? If you're just walking the walk and you're talking the talk, you're doing something for God. I'm telling you, every time when people look at you and they say, I remember when he used to do this, but not no more. He's going down. You're bringing glory to God. I remember when they used to cuss like a sailor, but now they got the praises of God on their lips. I'm telling you, keep walking the walk. Keep talking the talk. You're bringing glory to God. Praise God. I got to hurry. Let's see, the, let's see the next picture. That was my last day at the island. You see Sato, he getting cleaner and cleaner. And we don't only, me and my wife, only ones wearing shoes. There's 37, 38 people there, but that day we had 58 people in church. From 6 to 58 people. God did a great, great work there. And, 
And when I went to Palau, I thought, this is, we're going to go there, and this is going to be the rest of my life. But after being there, knowing there's two great congregations there, and, and I, we were there to do the work. of I just felt like I was done. I did the work of an evangelist. But I didn't want to go back to that miserable spot. And I asked, so I just went ahead and called our, our regional director, and I said, what would you have me to do? I said, I love Micronesia. I don't want to leave. But I feel like I'm done here, and now they're giving me choices. And he gave me three different choices, but I, let's see the next picture. I chose the island of Saipan. And the reason I chose Saipan was because in 2008, there was a church there. It was a UPCI church. The pastor passed away, and they were unable to get a minister or a missionary there. And, and the church is, is, is fell on apart, and it's, most of the believers have went back into false things and things like that. And that just, that just pulled my, I don't want our people in, in listening to lies. Amen. And so my heart went out to that. And, and that's why we're here today is we, we're here because we need help. And uh, I, I told my wife, I said, when we get to the island... I said, it's just going to be you and me. And I said, if it's our first service, I said, I'm going to, so I'm going to preach like it's general conference, even if it's just you and me. And I said, you better amen me. <laughs> and she said, well, I'm going to lead worship like it's general conference. And you better not sit down on me. That's right. And I just believe through your prayers and through your support that it's going to be more than just my wife and I. I believe that there's some embers burning still in those saints that from that old church. And I believe when we get there that the wind of God, the Spirit of God is going to begin to... And those embers are going to get brighter and brighter until they turn into a flame. And it's going to birth a church. And backsliders are going to come in. And new converts are going to come. And a church is going to be established. But look, I'm not arrogant enough to think it's because the Thomases are there. But ladies and gentlemen, I still believe in the message that we preach. I still believe that if you repent of your sins and get baptized in His name, you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I believe God's going to do a work. And so we're here today and we're asking for your prayers. Somebody say, I'll pray for you. Come on, I'll really pray. I'll pray for you. Yes, thank you. And so we also, we were looking for partners in missions. And please see the leadership pastor. He knows all about this. But that's just where you say you'll partner with us for $25, $30, $35 a month to start a church on Saipan. And you say, well, that doesn't seem like a lot of money. This island is 12 miles long and 5 miles wide. There's 43,000 people on this island. That's enough money to get me some gas to go to this Bible study, this Bible study, this Bible study, and get the church off the ground. But more than that, it keeps us there so we don't have to leave. There's nothing worse for a missionary to, to go and start revival and then have to leave. Also, in the islands there in Micronesia, it's United Airlines that services the islands. And when you get on the plane, they say, thank you for choosing United Airlines, but you didn't have a choice. And the price reflects it. And so we don't have many left. We got whatever we got back there is all we got left. But these little flashlights, they say, I heart Saipan on them. And we're giving those away for any donation. And that money goes directly to buying airline tickets. We have to fly everywhere we go. We have to fly there. And then we have to fly to Indonesia for a, a leadership meeting. And then back to Saipan. And then we have to fly to Guam for general conference. And back to Saipan. And then we have to fly home. It's very, very expensive. And so if the Lord would lay it on your heart to, to help us there, that would be much appreciated. And so there's missions. But if you'll give me 10 more minutes, let me minister to the church. Can I tell you that I'm in church today because I need God? You say, well, I thought you were the missionary. Well, I'm in Texas because I'm a missionary. But I'm in the church because I need God. I need God's mercy. I need His love. I need His grace. I need His guidance. I need His direction. I'm here today, ladies and gentlemen, because I recognize that there's nothing good in me but God. I need God in my life. Praise the Lord. Anybody else here because they need God? Praise the Lord. So 
I want to, I wonder sometimes why is it that we come to church and we leave out in the same way we came in. And I've, I've been from sea to signing sea from the north, south, east, west across North America. And I found something that's common in every place. It's not just one place, it's every place. And it's intimidation. It keeps us from getting what God has for us. You say, what do you mean? I talk, I, I, like we'll come in those back doors, we're coming into church. And we know we need something from God, but we look over and we see Brother Perfect with his perfect wife and his perfect kids. And I come in with my goof up and, and my little booger factories, and that intimidates me. And so what do I do? Praise the Lord. Everything's good. And I smile. Or what about sometimes we come in and we look around and we see, the oh, man, Sister Tell It All is at church today. And today she brung her auntie gossip. And if I make a move to the altar and cry out to God, it's going to be all over Facebook, all over Twitter, all over the Internet. Everybody's going to know my business. So what do I do? I just stay away from the altar and I'll tell everybody everything's good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How about this one? I walk in and I see the man of God. And I don't want the man of God to know that I'm struggling or know that I'm, I'm having issues because I'm in leadership. Ooh. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. So what do I do? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everything's good. And I leave out the back door the same way that I came in, starving, hungry, thirsty for a move of God in my life, in my family, in my ministry, all because I allow someone else to intimidate me. My goodness. Can I'm just going to do a survey here, and don't raise your hands, but I'm going to ask just three questions here, and then we'll talk about it. But if you're here today and you've never received the Holy Ghost and you need to receive the Holy Ghost, but maybe you've been baptized, you've just never spoken tongues, if, if that's question one. Or maybe you, you've, you've received the Holy Ghost, but it's been a long time since you prayed through and you like to pray through tonight. Maybe that's you. Now question number three. You, you're in the church, but... There, there's some things going on in the home, the family, the marriage, the kids. Uh, maybe it's a health issue. Maybe it's a financial issue. Maybe it's a legal issue. Maybe it's you've got a wayward kids or, or spouses. or you got some troubles and you need God. If any of that fits you, would you raise your hand up real high? Come on, every hand in this place. Come on, raise them up real high. If you need God, raise your hands up. All right, now everybody look around. Keep your hands up. Look around. Do you know what we just established? There's no big eyes and there's no little U's in the kingdom of God. We're here, every single one of us, because we need something from God. And how can I let somebody or how could I hinder my brother, my sister in getting what they need from God? And so what am we going to do? Like I told you, I need God. Pastor needs God. Brother perfect. Brother perfect. He's not so perfect. He needs God too. And if sister tell it all is going to tell something, let him tell how I got blessed. Let him tell how I got the Holy Ghost. Let him tell how I prayed back through. Let him tell how God healed me, how God delivered me, how God set me free. Let him tell about how good God is in my life. Praise God. So if the music would come. This is what we're, I know it's Wednesday, but this is what we're going to do. You guys admitted that you need God just like me. And so we got a little bit before church is over. And so we're going to open up the altar and we're going to pray. But we're going to pray without intimidate, by, by feeling intimidated by our neighbor. And look, I know I'm not putting anybody in sin, okay? I know what it's like to live in this world. I know what it's like to work 12 hours a day. 
to come home, to cook dinner, to feed the kids, to do the dishes, to do the laundry, to fold the laundry, to bathe the kids, to get the kids to bed, to mow the grass, to all of that stuff after 12 hours a day and you lay down and it's... And you just get up to do it again the next day. And Jesus warns us about the cares and the fares of the world, how it'll choke out the seed. But Paul tells Timothy, says, Timothy, stir up the gift. Stir it up. So tonight, I'm going to stir it up. I'm not leaving this place the way I come in, but I'm going to stir it up. I'm going to ask God for forgiveness. I'm going to say, God, if you got sin, ladies and gentlemen, this is the house of mercy. This is the house of grace. This is the only place you're going to find forgiveness. So don't be intimidated to say, God, I need forgiveness today. If it's just been a while and the cares and the affairs, God, forgive me. And you get all of that out. Then we say, God, I thank you. I thank you for the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the renewing. Let's all stand. I thank you, Lord, for the touch in my family, in my home, in my ministry. So these altars are open as they begin to play and as they begin to sing. And I'm going to begin to pray. If you've never received the gift of the Holy Ghost and you would like to receive it, please come see me. I want to pray with you and we can get the Holy Ghost together tonight. Lord, come on, these altars are open. Come on, let's come quickly. Let's find a place to pray. Grab some carpet, grab a wall, grab a chair. Let's find a place to pray, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have revival in our homes and in our marriages and our ministry. God, right now, Lord, I pray for this beautiful congregation, God. I pray for your mercy. I pray for your love. I pray for your grace. I pray, God, that you would do a work in this house, God, a work. God, upon our families and our ministry, God, cover us under the blood, Lord. God, I don't want to leave this place the way that I come, but God, I want these folks and I mean to have revival, Lord. Oh, God, I pray for backslidden children today, Lord. Call them, Lord, and draw them back. God, I pray for that wayward spouse that's out there, Lord. Bring them back to the house of God, Lord Jesus. God, I pray for the ministries here, Lord. I pray, God, that soul winning, Lord, revival, Lord, evangelism would go forth, Lord God. Do a mighty work, Lord, in this house tonight. Touch and deliver and heal, Lord, and sanctify, God. Oh, in the name of Jesus, God, we call upon you by your name. Oh, we need you today, Lord. We need you today.
thankful for the move of God that we are experiencing right now. Would you raise your hands one more time and close your eyes? Old-fashioned revival service. In the name of Jesus. It's what this reminds me of, an old-fashioned revival service. In the name of Jesus. I love you today. Those of you who are here know that pastor doesn't do this much because our church is always so faithful to give many times. The church underwrites everything and, and tries to bless our missionaries as much as we can. But tonight, uh, you heard him say for cash offerings that they have 24 flashlights. And the church is going to purchase one of those flashlights for an extra $2,000. <clears> and we have 23 more flashlights. Is there anybody, brother, 1,000? 1,022 flashlights. Anybody else? 1,021 flashlights. 1,020 flashlights left. 1,019, 1,018 left. 117 left. 1,016 left. 1,015 left. 1,014 left. $500, who will take one for $500? 14 left. There's one for $500, 13 left in the back. How much? $500, Brother Cripps. 12 left, is that right? Keep me, keep me going, 500, 11 left. 500, 10 left, 500, 9 left, 508 left, 507 left. All right, 250, 250, 6 left. $100. There's one, God bless you, 5 left, $100, 4 left. 103 left, 102 left, 101 left, 100, 500. Okay, y'all got to keep up with what you pledged because y'all lost me. Y'all want to keep going, 200? No? You're just saying praise the Lord? Okay. Okay, good. 100, 100. A hundred. You're going to match the church. Two thousand. There's about to be revival in Saipan. thousand. I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, my do I feel the Holy Ghost? 500. We don't do this often. Well, the flashlights are gone, but the light is going to shine brighter than it's ever shone before. So, 1,000. Tell you what we're going to do to give everyone a, a chance to participate. You might not have had 100. You might just have something. If the ushers will go and get the offering bag real quick, I think more than anything else is not about the money you give, but the unity and the cooperation of the giving. We want to give everyone an opportunity today, and, and we're so thankful. Thank, thanks to each of you. So... Those of you who want to do it electronically, why don't you go ahead 
if you have it tonight and you want to go ahead and do that tonight, God bless you. You can go and line up and do that electronically. And we will ensure, make sure you say Saipan Micronesia. Uh, give us one minute, and we're going to tell you exactly how to make that out. I think we're going to go through Hope Center and then make it out to you as we collect it. 